Hi, I'm Brian Walton. I'm here to show you how to use log log and semi log transforms to be able to find formulas for power and exponential functions. First, let's look at power functions. A power function is any time you have a constant multiple, that's what the A stands for, times the independent variable x raised to a power. Now, it doesn't have to be x, it could be any variable. But here I'll think of my variables as x and y. A log log plot is effectively where you take the logarithm of x and call that your new variable u. Take the logarithm of your y, call that a new variable v. And if I were to plot uh, v on my y-axis and u on my x-axis, I get a line. And to show that, what I want to do is I want to just point out, if I take a logarithm of y, so that's here, and I replace y by its formula, then the properties of logarithms split this product of a times x to the p into the logarithm of a times the logarithm of x to the p and then another property allows the power p to come out front. If I compare that to the formula of a line v is equal to a slope times my independent variable u plus an intercept then I, I want to make a connection here that my logarithm of a is playing the role of my intercept and because logarithm of x is u my slope is played by the role of p so if I can think about a log log transform and find the equation of a line then the slope will be my power p and the intercept will be the logarithm of my constant so let's use that in an example here we want to imagine that y is related to x through a power function and so that power function we'll think of as y equals a x to some unknown power p and we're told that it passes through two points 2 3 and 4 9 and what we'll do is we will use the idea of a log log transform we all start by writing our basic formula so here we're using a power function so we'll write y equals a x to some power p. And just to remind ourselves of why we use a log log transform, uh, I'll take a logarithm of both sides. So I get the logarithm of y equals the logarithm of a x to the p. Now when I use properties of logarithms, I can rewrite the left-hand side as the logarithm of a plus p times the logarithm of x. Because our transformed formula involves both the logarithm of x and the logarithm of y, we know we need a log-log transform. So that's going to motivate creating some new variables. So we'll call u the log of x, and v will be the log of y. What we need to do now is we need to transform our original coordinates from x, y equals 2, 3. So x, y equals 2, 3 and x, y equals 4, 9 and we'll want to transfer those into our new coordinates. So our first point tells us that our coordinate uv is log 2 log 3. And our second point our uv become log 4 and log 9. So I probably should put parentheses on all of those because it's a function. And now what we want to do is in our transformed coordinates we have a linear shape. So a line we're going to need a slope That'll be the change in v over the change in x, sorry, not x, the change in u, our independent variable. And we'll do that using our two points. So I get the log of 9 minus the log of 3, that's the change in v. And our change in u is the log of 4 minus the log of 2. Now using properties of logarithms, I can rewrite that as the log of 9 thirds on top 
divided by the log of 4 halves on the bottom. So it's log 3 divided by log 2. And this slope will be the power in the power function. Now that I have my slope, I can use a point along with the slope to come up with a line. So v minus, let's see, the log, let's do log 3, we'll use our first point, is equal to my slope, so that was the log 3 over log 2 times u minus the x coordinate, or the u coordinate, of log 2. And this is the equation of my graph in the transformed coordinates. And what I want is I want to now think about uh, using this to go back to my original coordinates. So let's now transition back to our original coordinates. And remember the v was the log of y minus the log of 3 is equal to the same power log 3 log 2 times okay u that was the log of x minus log 2 okay and now I'm going to use the properties of logarithms again on the left log y minus log 3 I can rewrite that as a quotient logarithm of y divided by 3 is equal to and um, just temporarily I'm gonna call this P um, gets a little bit in the way to write it that much times uh, the log log x minus log 2 is the log of x over 2 Okay. Now, the thing is, I can now use the property of logarithms and move that p in as a power so that I now get log of y divided by 3 is equal to the logarithm of this value x over 2 raised to the p power. So I have a logarithm equals a logarithm. That's enough to give me my, my equation. My formula is y divided by 3 equals x over 2 to that funny power, which was the log of 3 divided by the log of 2. And if I multiply both sides by 3, I get a formula, so y is a function, 3 times the quantity x over 2 to that power, which takes a little bit to write. And this is a power function. Now notice it doesn't necessarily look like a power function because it's not x to the power, but using properties of logarithms I could apply this power to the top and the bottom and get a power function. Just in case you're wondering how that would work, um, that'll be 3 and then I have 2 to that power, log 3 over log 2, that's my coefficient, and then I still have x to the same power log 3 over log 2. And so that's now in, in true power uh, power function notation. I have a constant times x to a power, but uh, I think this other form is much preferred in how it looks. Exponential functions behave in a similar way. Um, I, I start with my basic formula, y equals a constant times a base to a power x, 
Um, when I take a logarithm of both sides, I get the logarithm of y. Uh, this time, the x is going to become out, come outside as the power, and so the logarithm of y is a linear function of x. Because only y is applied with a logarithm, this is called a semi-log plot. So that's a semi-log plot. And notice that the slope is the logarithm of the base, and this time the y-intercept is again the logarithm of that value. When we go through the calculations, though, we'll just take the logarithm of both sides, do the transform, and find the equation like we did for our power function. Here's our example. Suppose y is related to x through an exponential function, y equals a times b to the x. Notice we, we don't know either our constant multiple a or our base b. We want to find a formula that passes through the same two points as our previous example, but it's a different function. So what we'll do is we'll start by writing y equals a times b to the x. We'll take a logarithm of both sides, just to remind ourselves of what our formula is going to be, the log of a b to the x, and by the properties of logarithms, I get the log of a plus x times the logarithm of our base. So there's only one variable that needs to be transformed. We'll introduce v equals the logarithm of y, and our points, x, y, which were 2, 3, and x, y equals 4, 9, will become points x, v. So the first will be 2 log of 3. And our second point will have the same x as before, 4. And the v coordinate is log of 9. And in this scale, these are supposed to be on a line. So how do we find a line? We find a slope. So we will start by finding a slope. The change in v over the change in x will be log 9 minus log 3 and we'll divide by 4 minus 2. And so as before, properties of logarithms, difference of logarithms becomes the logarithm of a quotient, and the denominator just simplifies as 2. So I get log of 3 divided by 2. That's my slope. And in this problem, uh, that will be actually my base actually the logarithm of my base. So in order to find the equation I now use a point and so I'll use the first point again so v minus the logarithm of 3 equals the slope which was the logarithm of 3 over 2 times x minus the x coordinate. What we'll do is we're going to change our v back into our logarithm of y so that we can solve for y. So on the left I get log y minus log 3 equals log of 3 over 2 times x minus 2. All right, let's see what simplifications we can use. On the left, I've got a difference of logarithms. So I can change that to log of y divided by 3. On the left, logarithm, and then I have a bunch of stuff that it's multiplied by. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite that as the logarithm of 3 times this fraction x minus 2 over 2. So I've moved this division by 2 and I've grouped it with the x minus 2. 
and I can rewrite that now. This is a logarithm times a number. I'll treat this number as an exponent. So log of y divided by 3 will be equal to the logarithm 3 raised to a power x minus 2 over 3. And now that I have two logarithms that are equal, that's how I get my equation. The inside, y over 3, has to equal 3 times the quantity, sorry, 3 raised to the power, x minus 2 over 2. I'll multiply over by 3 and I get my final formula. y equals 3 times this base 3 to the x minus 2 over 3. Now the formula that we found, it's not in true exponential notation, but it is an exponential function. I could use the properties of exponents and, and split this up, but uh, this is the simplest version of the formula. So just to show that it actually is exponential form, let's go through the, the steps. So we start with our formula 3 times 3 to the power x minus 2 over 3. So what we'll do is I'm going to rewrite the exponent as a multiplication, 1 third times, sorry, that's, I copied wrong, a 2, a 2, x minus 2. See somewhere else I made a mistake. Let's fix that while we're at it. That should also have been a 2. Okay. By properties of exponents, I can rewrite this as 3 to the half, so that's the square root of 3 raised to the x minus 2 power. Again, now I can use a property of exponents. When you have a difference in the powers, I can rewrite that as a quotient. So I get 3 times 3 to the half to the x over 3 to the half squared. So that's rewriting that, and um, what I'll do, I can simplify this. 3 to the half squared, that's 3. Um, 3 divided by 3, those will actually cancel, and I get 1 times the square root of 3 to the x power. And so there's my exponential form. My coefficient a is 1, and my base was the square root of 3.